Do you know the feeling when you see something being done that is totally normal to do, but you've got no clue on how they're doing it? Maybe for you it's changing the car oil, or playing guitar, or ironing your clothes. Well, for me, it's welding. You know how maddening that is? What in the f***? And he's just gonna drag it down the hill. I guess we'll just fix whatever gets broken. Okay. Today we're going to be doing something a little different than normal and a total first for me. We're going to be doing some welding. The sole purpose of this project we are doing today is to toss me into the unknown world that is welding, so I might be able to utilize it on future projects. I'm not starting myself off with something easy either. This week we are going to be building a 6 foot tall by 16 foot long ramp for my buddy Dave so he can jump this massive creek gap that spans about 20 feet out to where you'll actually land. This is probably the biggest gap he's jumped so I'm pretty excited to see him jump it. By the end of this I will be at least decently proficient at welding because there's a lot to weld. So all you welders out there, be patient with me so let's get to it. Ah. To start off, we of course need a plan. Unlike building with wood, where I could walk out into the woods and collect whatever I needed, I had to make a list of materials first so that I could tell the shop how much steel I needed and what kind. Since I'm a total newbie to welding, I actually purchased a set of plans from DestructionRamps.com. This guy has tons of great step-by-step -step plans on his site for both wood and metal ramps that I highly recommend. So, thanks to that site, I just had to follow his cut list and go pick up what I needed from our local steel shop. I first got to work by examining my plans and cutting every single piece to its specified dimensions. This was actually more of a pain in the butt than it might look. Firstly, I thought I could just cut it with my small handheld grinder, but holy hell would that have taken forever. So I borrowed my uncle's chop saw instead, because not only did this cut much faster, but it also cut much straighter than I could have by hand, which is absolutely crucial when welding because you want the metal to butt right up against each other for a more clean, strong weld. Once I had all the pieces cut to their sizes, then it was time to bend the steel to create the radius of the ramp. To do that, you'll cut slits along the top and sides of each bar that you want bent. This allows just enough room to bend the steel into the curved shape we're after. To make sure I'm bending the metal to the right radius though, I used some chalk to draw out the actual shape so that all we had to do was match the metal bar to that chalk line. Okay, so what we're going to do now is since we've got these cuts in it, we are just going to try and line it up on that line I just drew out. What I'll do, probably just start by bending them as much as I can and doing what's called a spot weld or a tack weld. Spot weld is simply a one to two second weld that creates a small circle. It's not very strong, but it holds stuff together until you're ready to weld the full seam, which is what we did next. And welding the actual seam took me many attempts to get right. It's not that doing the weld is hard, it's just making sure the environment is right for the weld. You can't have too much wind, or too much heat, or too little heat, or too much wire coming out, or too little wire coming out, or whatever else it was. I'd say one of the more important things that I was always underestimating was making sure the surface I was welding was totally spotless clean and down to bare metal. For this, I eventually just started grinding down all of the surfaces that were going to be welded to a shiny finish. I have got to got a pretty dirty face. <laughs> After getting the first side done, I simply took the other side, clamped it to the finished one, and tack welded it to the same radius. This side was way easier to do, and I really felt like I was getting the hang of this welding thing. But this is where I made a huge mistake. <laughs> Due to my lack of experience, I wasn't thinking about how if I had any weight on the shape, it might melt it in a certain direction. So, since I had the metal resting between two sawhorses, which were applying downward pressure at the middle and upward pressure at the end, you can look closely and see that the ends start to go up as I weld down the center. Well, I wasn't paying any attention to this. This looks sick. I was trying to just get nice, clean looking welds. So remember this mistake and you'll see where it comes into play later on. Since I was unaware of what I had just done, I went ahead and moved on to getting the rest of my pieces for the ramp prepped for welding. And once everything was cleaned up and ready to go, of course I discovered another mistake. 
The plans that I used didn't specify whether to measure from the inside or outside of the line that I drew on the ground. I wrongly assumed to put it on the inside. So I ended up with a bunch of bracing pieces that were all cut too long. This wasn't the total end of the world, a ramp would not be noticeably different when ridden, and I simply had to cut all my bracing pieces to the new size that I was dealing with. So that's what I did. Alright, one side done. Sucker's big. Now we just gotta do the other side. That, of course, is when I discovered mistake number one that we found out about earlier, or at least you and I did, not me in the video. Is it like getting weighted? Holy sh! Wow. Might be kind of hard to see, but this other arc piece is pretty different. Like probably an inch or so off from the other one. So I think I'm gonna have to recut some of these uh, notches and re-weld them so that it matches the other arc a little better. Anyway, let's just keep cruising. Now, even after realizing my mistake, I still repeated the same thing three more times after this. Even going so far as to clamp the radius down to the other radius and welding the entire thing together. It's so much worse than it was before. You know how maddening that is? How much work I just put into this stupid thing for the last two hours and now it's it's so much worse than it was before. That little bit of being on those saw horses while I was welding, I guess it bends it because of the heat. That's upsetting. That sucks. I mean, it's two inches in. It's literally so much worse than it was. I'm done for today. If you're a welder, you could probably tell me what the hell I was doing wrong here, but I just presumed metal melts, stretches, and contracts at high temperatures, so you need a really good table to keep things in place while you're working. But you tell me, because I can't fully say what was going on. All right, let's see if it tries to pull back. As of right now, it looks good. What are you supposed to do about that? Thankfully, in this moment, I thought of the idea to weld on the back bracing before I unclamped the radius anymore. Everything's welded. Hopefully when I undo this, this doesn't come forward. Let's see. I think we're okay. And with our radius finally at the right angle, all that was left was to put the rest of the bracing on, stand it up, and weld the pieces together that connect the sides. Finally had the whole thing put together and welded, and man oh man was I happy to be done. All of my viewers who weld, I don't know how you do it. It's way too hot, it's way too dirty, and it's way too exhausting for me. With all my mistakes, this took me around two weeks to completely finish. And let me just say this, at the end of day three, I was already regretting taking on this project, so you can be sure by the end of two weeks, I had made the pledge to never weld another bike ramp again. But it was looking pretty sweet, so my excitement was still there to see it ridden. And with my dad's help, I got it loaded up and headed over to Dave's. Once I got to Dave's place, we had a whole new problem to deal with, getting it through the woods down to where he wanted it. He's doing a great job, look. It's just like 400 pounds of metal coming down at him. We got it. We're about 50 feet away now. It's the home stretch. It's done. We're at the easy part. That's uh, pretty easy. Once we had the ramp down at the bottom, I gave it a quick coat of paint to keep it from rusting. And then I let four months go by. <laughs> Other projects came up, and since this one was purely for fun, it just got put aside. But better late than never. I got all the deck boards put on at some point. And with that, the ramp was totally done and ready to be ridden. 
here we are. It is done. At least the ramp is. And now it's time to ride it. I'm not riding it. <laughs> no freaking way. Way too far out of my skill level. We do have a buddy, Tom, who is coming over right now and he's going to try and ride it. Hopefully it's not too muddy. We're getting a bunch of snow tonight and this is kind of the last chance to do it before it gets too bad. If he does it, maybe Dave will try it after that. We'll see. But, you know, as long as somebody rides the damn thing. I'll launch it. That's it? You've decided? Let me show them what you look like first without a concussion. Well, you're jumping up to it, so I don't think it's gonna be a huge impact. I, I would imagine like my first go or two might be a little wonky, just trying to figure out like yeah. the right amount of speed to jump yeah. in. So I would just probably overdo it first try. What helmet is recommended? Should I wear my full face and goggles to look cool or should I wear my sparkly open face helmet and be a goofball? Maybe full face initially, and then you get the feel, and then you can look like a bowling ball disco head. Okay. Fuck it, dropping. Fucking. Well, this seems like the perfect spot to put an ad for Bikes Online, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Bikes Online is an online bike shop. Every Polygon bike I have has come straight from their site, not only super fast, but with 90% of the bike already put together. So as soon as I have a bike show up on my doorstep, I'm riding it within just a few minutes right out of the box which is not the case with a lot of online retailers. Bikes Online also stocks loads of awesome bikes such as Polygon, of course the best bikes in the world. Uh, not only are the bikes excellent, but thanks to their online direct to consumer model, which skips the middleman, you can get a heck of a deal. On top of that, if you don't like the bike, who cares? They'll let you return the bike for free in the first 14 days if you don't love it. That's a total refund, and they even come pick it up from you free of charge. So all you have to do is go to the link in my description, or just go to bikesonline.com. Okay, you can go back to the video now. <laughs> Yeah, that limb. <laughs> Dude! Yeah! <laughs> Holy f You hit a f tree! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Dave, are you ready to be towed in? You have satisfied my problem of mental blockage here. Now it's the problem of physically doing it. Yeah. And doing it, Dave did. None of us knew he was going to, and I'm not even sure he knew he was going to. Either way, all I have is this because we were all so surprised. A bittersweet shot of Dave conquering his fear, but also getting a slight concussion. <laughs> Jeez, not a cool oh. you got a strap. Sorry. I rang myself pretty good, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, thank you. God damn. <laughs> Fuck yeah. You, you did it. <laughs> <laughs> Dave is absolutely okay now and is definitely ready to hit this jump again. But it's winter time now and the mud is, well, mudding. So we've got plans to come back in spring to ride this sucker again and maybe get me to ride it too. So keep an eye out for more videos. I'm back at Howler Bike Park and we're building some pretty insane stuff that I really want to show you guys. But until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.